Hello everyone, my name is Dory and this is my new rifle. I have here a Grey Birch Fusion in their um, foundation chassis uh, with their Shrike bolt and I have a two-stage kit trigger topped with a Vortex Diamondback Tactical. All right, everyone, as you can tell, today we are taking a look at the new Grey Birch Fusion Rifle. I received this barrel upper from Grey Birch two days ago. Today is Saturday, so yesterday on Friday, Dory and I took this rifle out to the range for its maiden voyage just to run it through its paces, make sure it was reliable and just get some preliminary drop data for it. I think we put uh, around 350 rounds through the rifle yesterday. And then today we had a double header, 10 stages in total, or PS match, so it's NRL 22 style shooting. I also used this rifle for a couple stages just for fun and with some zeroing involved, I would say we probably shot 150 rounds through it. So all in all, we have just probably around a brick of ammo through this rifle in total, so 500 rounds, and it's been performing really well. Yesterday, we had a couple of stovepipes more towards the beginning of the shooting session, and it seems to have settled in and broken in. Today, I noticed Dory had one stovepipe, so we'll keep an eye on that, but so far, it's functioning pretty good, and she's really enjoyed shooting this rifle. I built this rifle to be primarily her ORPS setup, and it seems to be working really nice for her. Of course, it is a very nice light build, which is what I was going for with the really cool looking uh, carbon fiber wrapped barrel there. I also do plan to push this rifle out to distance in the future. Right now the field we shoot at has really tall grass so once that settles down and I can actually see over the field uh, we'll probably push this out to probably around 600 yards to start and just go from there. Now I do want to mention that Greybridge sent me this barreled upper for testing completely free of charge so just want to put that out there. Now my first introduction to Greybridge products was was when I won their chassis system at the CRPS finale last year. And at the time, the foundation chassis here was still in production. So I received it sometime this year and I was actually very impressed with it. I really do like the foundation chassis quite a bit. So when I, when I received this foundation chassis here, again from the draw prize, I thought it would be such a perfect chassis to build a precision rifle uh, for for Dory, my wife, because again, it's just a little bit lighter and easier for her to use. So I reached out to Grey Birch and I bought another foundation chassis. And at the same time, Steve over there asked if I wanted to have one of their new fusion rifles for testing when it came out. So I said, heck yeah, and here it is. Now, they do listen to their customers and their suggestions because you can see here now that this foundation chassis on Dory's rifle has the new 10 inch forend, which is a big win. The small like four or five inch uh, forend that originally came on the foundation chassis was just not long enough for the PRS style shooting. And then I gave them that feedback as, as well as other shooters. And they very quickly came out with the 10 inch. So I think that's really awesome. They do appreciate customer feedback. Anyway, talking about weight, this rifle up here, which is kind of like my race gun build is just over four and a half pounds. And Dory's rifle here with optics and everything is just over six pounds. I think it was six pounds, five ounces. Again, sometimes I forget she's a tiny human being. So moving around like an 18 pound rifle through stages can be a little bit more troublesome for her. So again, I wanted to build her a nice light rifle and this one definitely fits the bill. All right, so let's talk about the fusion system from Grey Birch. What they've done here is really interesting. They've used a barrel nut, so a threaded barrel into the receiver along with the barrel nut to secure the barrel onto the receiver. Now, a lot of rifles do use this setup, of course, but this is the first time I've seen a 1022 compatible rifle use this, which is obviously gonna create much better rigidity and consistency when you compare it to your traditional V-Block system on 1022s. So I think that's really awesome. Everything else is 1022 compatible, so your standard bolt assemblies, trigger groups, and all that, your stocks and chassis should be compatible with this rifle. But of course, you have this nice barrel nut system in the Grey Birch Fusion, which is, I think, going to be very interesting for PRS style shooters and the precision, you know, like a bench rest type guys. Right now, Grey Birch only offers their barrels in a carbon-wrapped 
version. And I already mentioned this to Steve, but I think if they came out with a full seal version and even maybe like an 18 or a 20 inch, that would really catch the attention of some of the PRS style shooters again, because a lot of guys do like to run the full heavy steel barrels for a little bit of stability and balancing out the rifle, of course. So I already mentioned that suggestion to them, but if you agree with me, definitely leave it in the comments below or reach out to Grey Birch because again, they do like to know what their customers are thinking. And I have a very strong hunt that again a lot of us PRS rimfire style shooters are really going to look uh, or be interested in if they come out with a full steel version of this fusion rifle. That being said though again being such a light rifle this is perfect for my wife uh, who is smaller stature or you know if you have a youth shooter or any, anyone like that uh, this is just absolutely perfect with the carbon barrel. Another thing this rifle would be awesome for is like maple seed which is the Canadian equivalent of the apple seed rifleman course. Uh, this unfortunately didn't arrive in time for the maple seed I shot last weekend um, but if I do another one in the future I'll probably steal this rifle for Dory or from Dory <laughs> for the day. So again I do want to thank Steve at Grey Birch for sending me the barreled receiver. I did purchase the foundation chassis as well as everything else um, but they did send me the barrel and the receiver for free so again I want to thank him for that. So this foundation chassis here is one of the first ones from their first batch and at the time I guess they didn't really have in mind the fusion design yet because you do have to modify the inside of the chassis inlet slightly to fit the barrel nut because it is wider than your standard barrel contour here. So you simply just have to foul and radius kind of two edges on the inside which is no big deal. All their chassis going forward are going to be compatible with their barrel nut but just know that if you bought one of the first foundation chassis and you pick up a fusion you might have to file a little bit of the aluminum down but it really wasn't a big deal I simply did it slowly I kept checking the fit of the barrel nut you don't have to take off too much material and I have just enough to fit a piece of paper between the barrel nut and the chassis now so it is free floated you don't want the chassis pressing up against the barrel nut of course um, but I just want to mention that for you guys who have one of the original original foundation chassis. Another thing I noticed as well was the set screw configuration in the chassis here was a little bit different than the first foundation that I received. So there's a hole that runs from the, the top of the back of the receiver here all the way down to your trigger group and it's threaded for a set screw. So once you lock down the action screw, you can use the set screw to secure the back of the action down. Now the first foundation chassis I received again from my race gun had like a pretty long set screw. It's probably about like half an inch or so. They're now coming with two set screws. So you tighten down the first one and then you tighten down the second set screw behind the first one to kind of lock it down. So that's what I noticed is different as well. The one downside about this is you can't really adjust this when you have a scope here because of course the hole is right there and your scope is right above it. You need a pretty long allen key to reach down into there so make sure it's set properly before you put your optic on the rifle. They also shipped me the new 10 inch foreign for their foundation chassis to try out which is awesome because again me and a bunch of other shooters were really looking for a longer foreign. They actually sent me the design to kind of give some feedback before it went into production I believe and you can see they put a QD point here. Now I mentioned to them they should probably put it a little bit more forward because even with offhand shooting if your hands here it's a little bit close to the shooter in my opinion. It works perfectly fine if you just want to use the sling point for carrying in the field and whatnot but you can see I did add my own QD point here for Dory and myself to use. It's a little bit in a better spot. Again when you're shooting offhand your, your hand is probably about here so there's a little bit more room for the uh, sling to be used but that is integrated into there and of course you can see uh, some M-lock slots on the side of it. You have four in total, which is really nice. And of course, it still retains the Arca rail, which is now cut fully to the end. So there's nothing stopping your Arca accessories from being slipped off the forehand, which is awesome because for, again, PRS style shooting, I really like to be able to eject the bipod off the rifle quickly if you don't need it in a stage and Dory did that a couple times during our match today. So that's really awesome. Again, Grey Birch is listening to customer feedback and acting on it, which is fantastic. And just to give you a little comparison here of the previous fore end, you can see how much shorter it was there and of course the Arca rail cut did not go all the way, which was a bit of a complaint from myself and some other shooters. So big improvement there with the 10 inch forend. 
Something else I noticed yesterday when we were setting up the rifle for the first time for Dory was that the cheek piece here is pretty high relative to the rail that's integrated onto the receiver system. Now this is the LDR version, long distance ready, so it has a 20 MOA cant built into the top rail, which is again perfect for what we're using the rifle for. But I, I dropped the cheek piece all the way down for her proper cheek height relative to the scope, and it probably could be a touch lower still. And I realized that this is fairly high, again, compared to the height of your rail system here. And I know there have been some complaints of people running the red dot version of the gray birch receiver that they actually have to take the cheek piece off in order to get proper cheek height to look through their optics. So maybe keep that in mind, purchase slightly higher rings. I'm currently running these vortex rings which are one inch in height, but I may consider picking up uh, one and a quarter inch rings for this rifle, again, just to give her a little bit better fit with the cheek piece. But I just wanted to mention that because it is quite low, again, relative to their stock here. So this rifle build is showing a lot of promise, again, to be Dory's main ORPS setup. I think it is a lot of fun to shoot. I mean, I definitely like running bolt actions in these types of competitions, but I can definitely see the appeal of semis. I ran this rifle just a little bit for fun today and a semi can be a ton of fun to shoot. Um, I do want to touch on the Grey Birch Shrike bolt in detail, which I'll do right after this section of the video. But again, just to go over the build, we have the 16 inch Fusion barreled upper, which has the 20 MOA built into the rail. So this is the LDR, long distance ready version of the Fusion. We put it into a foundation chassis, again from Grey Birch, and it has, of course, the new 10 inch forend, which is amazing. The grip I just pulled off of one of my old ARs, it's like a Magpul MOE grip. The trigger I put in it is the two-stage kid trigger, which is fantastic. Honestly, this is probably the best trigger I've felt on any rimfire ever. The bolt in here, as I mentioned before, is also the Grey Birch Shrike bolt, which I'll take a closer look at in a moment. And we topped it off with the Diamondback Tactical. This is the 4 to 16 by 44 model. And again, it works perfectly fine out to 100 yards, which is what our ORPS matches go out to. So let's take a look at the bolt a little bit more closely. All right, so I pulled the bolt out of the Fusion rifle. So this is the Grey Birch Shrike bolt system. And as you can see here, it's definitely a little bit different than your standard 1022 bolt design. The most obvious difference is there's no channel cut out for the firing pin. It is completely encapsulated in the bolt. You can see the back of it there where the hammer hits and the bolt face which is that right there. It just has a very small area for it to protrude out and fire off the round, of course. Now, the only downside of this is the fact that if you need a replacement firing pin for any reason, you have to go back to Grey Birch. It doesn't use your Ruger design, obviously, but this should keep that channel a lot cleaner. So it should function pretty, pretty flawlessly for more rounds than your standard Ruger design, which I think is actually really neat. The other thing about this bolt is you can see it uses a threaded charging handle on the side here. Now, Grey Birch is not the only company that does this. I believe Phil Quartzen and other companies do this as well. But I didn't realize that this actually made assembly and disassembly of the 1022 a lot easier because the biggest pain in the butt when you are reassembling your 1022 is aligning, you know, your normal charging handle to the slot in the bolt. But with this one, you can simply just drop in the bolt with your recoil spring, of course, and it just kind of lays flat. And then you just simply screw the charging handle through the ejection port and you're done, which is so much easier than trying to line up the usual notched design. So I, again, I didn't realize that until recently playing around with this bolt. Now this bolt seems to be very well machined. They do boast high tolerances. I can't remember exactly the spec, but it should be similar performance with your kid bolts as well. So I do have a kid bolt in one of my 1022s. So we'll see how they perform side by side, but it does use your standard extractor setup here. And it seems to run really smoothly in the Fusion rifle. I know they mentioned in some Instagram posts that they have like a special uh, finish or coating to their bolt to give it some lubricity. And honestly, this is the smoothest bolt 
paired with their receiver that I felt. So I'll definitely try this in different receivers to, to see if it feels as nice. But I almost feel like you could run this bolt dry. I wouldn't recommend it. But yesterday when we brought the rifle out for the first rain session, I definitely put some oil in the action area. And I went to clean it last night before the match today because we put quite a few rounds through it. And instead of re-oiling it, I actually just kind of wiped off the gunky parts and it was uh, running pretty pretty good today. So I do like the bolt and we'll see how it goes or how it runs going forward. Anyway, uh, again, I will end the video with some footage from yesterday's range session as well as today's match. If you have any questions as usual, or if you have any comments for Grey Birch, leave them in the comments section below. Again, I really like to see a company that, uh, that listens to customer feedback. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, cheers. Hello, my name is Dorothy, and this is my new rifle. Dorothy? Oh my god. It is the Grey Birch Fusion. <laughs> this is the Grey Birch Fusion with do you remember anything? Okay, let's try it. It's a Grey Birch Fusion in their foundation chassis. It is the Grey Birch... <laughs> and a two-stage trigger. <laughs> <laughs> it's topped off with a Vortex Diamondback Tactical. And it's topped off with a Vortex Tactical. Vortex Diamondback Tactical. <laughs> okay. This is our very first shots out of the new Grey Birch Fusion with the uh, foundation chassis. So I think I have nine rounds here. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, so I'm high by like a lot, like 10 mils. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About um, have to come in left. One, two, four. One, two, three, four. How about? Gotta come down, one, two, three. Ah, we're on the dot. It cycles. Yeah, I'll finish the group there. All right, so that was obviously just a zero. I have to come up by about three clicks. One, two, three, have to come left about one so that should be basically a good zero for 25 yards here we'll do two groups of five again that those were the very first shots out of this rifle here at 25 yards just to make sure we're on paper before we go to 50. Uh, this is actually technically dory's rifle so she'll be putting some rounds through it today as well and hopefully it'll be working for our match tomorrow, our 10 stage double header match, which uh, Dory is also filming or shooting, I mean. <laughs> All right, so we'll shoot for groups now. So I'm gonna take a little bit more care. And we are dealing with a little bit of wind today. But this is my first shot. So I brought it down to here, then I correct it to here. And then I shot, I can't remember, like maybe seven, six or seven rounds in here. This was my second group, probably about half an inch or so. And then my third group, so these are both five round groups. Uh, I pulled that shot, so about the exact same size as the first one. So we got a couple more dots here. We'll finish up, uh, we'll fine tune the zero because you can see I'm a bit left still. So I brought it two clicks over um, and we'll shoot these dots and and see how it goes, right? Trigger is really light and it's a two stage. You'll bring it to the wall and then just a tiny bit more and it'll let one rip. So I'm still a bit left, but I'm just gonna hold the same. Oh, 
We got a malfunction. Look at that. So the first issue here, a little bit, then Dory shot a 10 round group here. Uh, then I shot a five round group and another five round group. So if you come closer, these two groups are pretty nice. A little bit than half inch there. Again, five rounds. Same with here, five rounds, almost like a one hole, you know, touching kind of group. So that's really good to see. How's the group? The first one I shot was this one. It's still going a little right, but it's pretty much still on the target. That's uh, how many rounds? 10. I think nice. you filled it out of 10. Yeah, that's good. And then that's the second one. It's able to hold it more steady in the middle. So it's hitting around it. So did you, did you hold more left for this group? No, I was still holding center, but I was uh, pinching more the gun into my shoulder so okay. that the recoil doesn't affect it as much. Okay, so yeah, we'll put it maybe one click more or two clicks more left. And then let's go to 50. Okay. Mag change. Wait. Okay, we have never seen it. Do you know how to clear it? Just pull it. You don't have to be gentle, just pull it. Good. Alright, should be your last round. So. Ely's shooting good out of it. Make the gun safe. Yep. <laughs> keep going, keep going. So I stacked that. Alright, there we go. Oh, you had a stovepipe on your last round. Good, make it safe. You, you see there's a there's a round in the chamber. <laughs> okay. All right, make it safe. Impact. Impact. Bottom. Impact. Safe. Impact. 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 Impact! 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 Nice. Okay. Hit. I, I had one just horrible trigger pull. No, no, I'm just uh, laughing because you can see. You can see this, you can see that. You're a shot at 50. Ding, ding, ding. Like all the road. Really? Hit. Impact. Safe. <laughs>
but I want something to do Some of those are misses for sure. <laughs> you can't tell because you're pulling the trigger as yeah. it hits in on the next.